decide to get one of these. He's going to be good with it by the time he gets to glory. Really good by the time he gets to glory. I'm not using it yet because I'm not there. I have a young lady that's going to share a testimony today. And I want you to listen to this fact. I already know what God's done for her. And as she shares that, I want you to begin to think, God, can you do this for me? Because the truth is, he can and he will. Sister Liz, we're ready. I want you to just let the Spirit do what the Spirit wants to do. You share with me all the stuff you share on the phone, I'm going to be jumping up and down. I want to just pray real quick yes. before I even start, because this is not me. This is like, before God gave me this touch this last week, um, if Pastor Rick had asked me to give a testimony or something, I would have been like shaking. And I still am shaking a little bit, but it's because I'm excited. Um, let me just pray. Dear God, I just ask yes. for your help right now, and I ask for your presence right now, God. Yes, God. Let Every word that comes out of my mouth be what you would want. Nothing of myself, but you, and may it bring glory to your name. Amen. Um, I just want to say, first off, that I've had a call in my life. My entire life, um, when I was little, when I was a young child, I had a call, and God spoke very clearly to my, to my heart. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep it. <laughs> um, thanks. As a child, God revealed that He had a call on my life for ministry. And it was like fact and truth to me. But I also had a war waging in my soul against that. It was the enemy, Satan oppression in my life, even as a child. You can ask my mother, there were things as a child that were satanic in a sense where she would be correcting me or something and I would mock her or I would do things that were just, just not right. And I couldn't help it. I would try to do good. But it was that war raging in my soul. And so I really believe that each person is born with two seeds in their heart. And God kind of revealed this to me this last week. Two seeds in your heart. One seed is the truth of God. One seed knows that God is who he says he is. God is the creator of the universe. And that he does have a plan for your life. And that he is God. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. And then the other seed that's planted in your soul is a carnal nature from when Adam and Eve chose to take the fruit and sin. And that seed is planted in our hearts. And so there's that war. You see even in the infancy, that war where the baby, the infant, is saying, my needs are more important than yours. Your sleep isn't important. Take care of me. Change my diaper. But it's, you know, it's that's what's supposed to be how it is. And then childhood. A toddler stealing a cookie. See how that feels. See how that guilt feels for the first time. And then if that war, we just, we have that war. And it was very strong for me growing up. From being a child and being... A teenager, I was very rebellious, but I always knew the truth in my heart, and I wanted to serve God, but it was as if Satan's oppression in my life was like a haze, like a sickening haze to where I would try my hardest to get through, and it was like a haze, uh, an oppression, and there is so much of that today in on earth that we don't realize the spiritual battle that's going on all around us at all times. And I went to Bible college, I went to the mission field, and I tried to do what God wanted me to do, and I knew who he was, was who he said he was, but still, 
that truth in my heart was not sparked because there was still an oppression in my life. And this past 2014 was one of the hardest years of my life. And I don't need your judgment and I don't need your, um, you to look down on me, but I'm just going to tell you a couple of the things. Some of you know that my husband, um, my ex-husband and I divorced after um, over 10 years of marriage. And, you know, that was difficult. And then because we had racked up so much uh, debt in our, between us, we, I had to file bankruptcy. And then in October, I was, I got sick and I didn't understand it. My whole right side went numb. Um, I started having strange fatigue and pain, but I thought I dismissed it, said thinking I'm working too many hours or, or just whatever. And finally, they said, you know, we don't know what's wrong with you, but finally some doctor had enough knowledge to take a, do a Lyme test, and it came back positive. And going to the specialist and everything, he said, he looked at me and said, you've got it all through your body. He would press on me, and every organ was inflamed. He would press on my kidneys, and it would hurt. And he would press on my pancreas, and I would scream out. My mind was gone. I was very mentally slow. A fogginess that I can't even tell you. I would drive into town to run errands, and it was almost like walking into a room and forgetting why you're there. That's how my mind was so affected by the Lyme. It can affect every part of your body, every organ, your brain, everything. But I also believe that there was a spiritual oppression too on that side too. Um, just the depression and everything that came around with it. Um, so yeah, I had all of these things going on and the specialist, um, my Lyme doctor said, the way it's affected your body and it's all throughout, he said, a tick could have bit you a couple years ago, and that's it's just spread throughout your body. He said, I don't know if you'll ever recover. I honestly don't know. We'll do the best treatments that I know of. I went on a strict diet. I went on strong antibiotics that were ripping my stomach apart that I had no, I lost a lot of weight. Um, I guess that was good, but my stomach was just constantly upset. I had no, ap no appetite, no, um, you know, it was just I was so sick. Some days I would wake up and I'd be, I would sleep 10 hours and I'd wake up exhausted and in pain and my knees and my joints and everything would just hurt so bad. And mom, mom didn't know what to do, but for a while it was getting so bad. She wanted to take care of me. I had no husband. I was trying to take care of my kids. And at one point she said, you know, maybe you should move in with us and, uh, We'll take care of you and the kids. And all along I was I was praying, you know, God, this can't be what is this really how? And I, I told God, you know, I want to serve you, whatever, whatever I have to go through, take me through it, but you need to give me some strength and everything. And I was just holding by a thread. And um, I don't know, last week, Sunday, last Sunday, I came in just Going through the motions, I'm here, I want to be here in church, but just kind of going through the motions because I knew what it, it was right. And Missy, um, Missy had, where's Missy? She, no, she's in the, yeah, she's over there. Okay, <laughs> sorry, Missy. <laughs> Missy had a word from God to tell me, and she came up to me, and she wrapped her arms around me, and she said, you need to know that God loves you, and you need to know that even though you had a rough last week, she said, did you have a rough week? And I said, yes, so my three kids and I had high fevers. Um, we were sick, it was, it was rough. And she said, I know, but you need to know that God loves you. And then she said, hug me. And I don't know, I, I love Missy, but I was just like, yeah, we're hugging. <laughs> and she said, Liz, hug me. And I was dead. Did I feel dead? I felt, I, there was just not a lot of emotion. I appreciated the fact that she cared about me, but there just wasn't a lot of emotion. Um, went through the church service. God was speaking to my heart through Pastor Eric's message, although I was kind of like zoning, like, 
you know. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Sunday night, I had texted, I had just started thinking, and I just got so desperate for God, and I said, God, um, I need you in my life, and I need you to be my strength, and I don't want to live for myself, and I don't want to live for my own, you know, whatever. I just started calling out to him and crying out to him, and God revealed to my heart that what Missy said was true, that, um, and also that I was, in fact, dead when she was hugging me. I was dead in my soul, and I had no real spiritual life to me. I knew the, knew the truth, but it wasn't, you know, whatever. So I began praying, and I began praying hard, and I... <laughs> just prayed for God's presence in my life, and I prayed that he would take me out of me, that he would take that sinful nature, that he would fill me, overflowing with him. And I just began to pray that way, and he met with me in such a real way. He came down, and I broke through that oppression, and that depression that has had me my whole entire life. I broke through that. It was God's power. It was nothing of me. And I told Pastor Rick on the phone, I said, I feel like I'm, I'm completely different. I'm a different person. This is not of me. And it kind of freaks me out sometimes. <laughs> it does. Because it's so real and it's so good and it's, it's life. I was dead and now I'm alive. I was asleep and now I'm awake. And I was baptized in the Holy Spirit too, and that's what I was, I, I um, grew up in this church as most of you know, and I believe I had real encounters with God as a, as a child here and as a teenager and, and everything, but this time breaking through, and I began praying, and uh, this is how I know it was not of me, because I was just praying, I was giving God glory, and I was just saying, thank you, you know, for meeting with me, thank you for um, this peace that I feel so deeply, thank you for this joy that I feel that I can't explain, thank you, and I began giving him praise, and I gave, gave him glory, and I started speaking in another language, and I... That's, to me, I'm like, I don't want to be labeled as crazy, but, you know, <laughs> it wasn't me. And I went, I ran into the bathroom in front of the mirror, and I was looking, and I'm like, praising God, and what was coming out of my mouth was not English and didn't match up with my lips, and that's all I can explain to you. And I was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, yeah, the Holy Spirit came into my life, and God has just done, okay, well, let me tell him about the mind. <laughs> so, I have all these things happening at the beginning of the week, and I realized my line doctor called, or the receptionist called to remind me of an appointment and I thought I'm feeling good I don't I don't feel the pain I don't feel the fatigue and I don't feel sick and I called my mom I said what should I do should I go and just see what he thinks or should I just not go and she said I think you should go and get his opinion see what he says and he's a believer of God um, the, the line doctor that I've been seeing and he's prayed with me after each visit that God would bring healing and bring a touch, and I've appreciated that. That's been awesome. Um, so my mom was like, go see what he says, go see what he thinks. So I went, and he walked in, and um, he said, how are we doing? He said, last month when you came in, you were so sick, every major organ was still inflamed. Um, I was still struggling with numbness at times um, in my arms and legs. And he said, so how are you doing? And I said, Dr. Pass, I'm doing awesome. I was like, 
I don't know how to explain it really. I said, but I'm doing amazing. And I said, I can't. And so he said, all right, well, let's check it out. He had me lay down and he started pressing on the organs that have been so painful. He started um, moving my joints that have been painful. And he said, does this hurt? Does this hurt? Is this? And I said, no, no, no. And he'd say, is this tender? I'd say, no. And he, and he even said, wow. And we, he got done from my head to my toes because you have to realize my thyroid was enlarged and it was difficult to swallow. It was swelling. My whole neck was painful a lot of times. Joints, head to toe. So he checks me out and this is what he says. This must be, this is a supernatural act of God is what he told me. spray on and he gave me some stuff for treatment for clothing and everything. He said take precautions and also watch your symptoms that they don't return because a lot of people when they, once they are infected with Lyme it can come back if you don't um, get it. So he told me, he said but don't come back if you don't need to. And he said praise God. <laughs> and so I'm holding on to that and I feel good. I feel the best I've felt in my life and I, I've Worried at times, saying, you know, what if this wears off? What if I, what if I'm on this like I, What if I, like, would it, would it, you know? But God has been giving me such a faith in Him that I'm the only way this is going to stop is if I walk away from that direct communion with Him, Amen. and that's how I would describe it as a direct line of access Amen. of power and peace and joy that's in my life now, Amen. and. God has spoken things to my heart about things that are going to happen. Do you want me to stop? Or am I, <laughs> I don't want to take too much time. But We're getting through all right. All right. Just let me say real quick that God has spoken to my heart things that are going to, and I'm not, this is nothing of me. This is him. Things that are going to happen and things, a hope that he is not finished with mankind. Amen. That he has a plan for each one of our lives. That there is a spiritual battle waging. That he is rising up his army. And he is gathering his people. And we're going to be a part of that. Amen. We're living in the last days. And we're going to be a part of that. We're going to be a that there will be revival through our land. There will be revival on this nation that has turned its back on God. That many will turn to him. That many will not. But that those who turn with him will have that peace and that grace and that strength that he will provide even in the face of dark times, even into the face of death. Whatever he, whatever happens, that he, you know, is our strength and our hope. And I guess that's about it. circumstances. Uh, I let Liz know, even though she went through all those things, God's not done because the call doesn't end. Amen? Amen. The call doesn't end because if God's laid that call, I mean, no matter how sidetracked you get, you end up still having to fulfill that call. Somebody said, how can you be so sure about that? I read about a prophet named Jonah. Ooh, how many ever heard about Jonah? <laughs> he was really sidetracked, how many would agree? Did he get off the hook? Did he still have to fulfill the call? He didn't even fulfill it with great desire or great joy. But I see that change in Liz. It's going to be fulfilled with great desire and great joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're worried that I'm going to preach a long time,